Charles Adams, I've been enjoying your career since Memphis and now the podcast has really opened my eyes about behind the scenes. You may not remember this, but we met back in 95 or 96 in Louisville, Kentucky, an IWA Mid-South show ran by one Ian Rotten. Given <laughs> the bad taste that Ian Rotten and his promotion I'm, has I'm in so- <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, given the bad taste that Ian Rotten and his promotion has in wrestling, I was wondering what are your thoughts on death matches and the wrestler who who the wrestlers who do this very dangerous style of wrestling. We, we, we talked about death matches recently, but because you mentioned Ian Rotten, you've got to give us some stories on working for Ian Rotten in the mid nineties, late nineties. Oh my God, going to really going to his show is not like going to a wrestling show. It's like going to a house of horrors. It's just too much. It's glass and blood and tables and ladders and, you know, knives and bottles. And it, it's everything. If you want to see just a, uh, a tragic uh, battering of the human form, go to one of his matches. I mean, it was just I mean, I have seen some clips, and it's IWA if you're looking for it. Mm-hmm. Just look IWA Louisville or Kentucky, and you will see some really bloody stuff. But in seeing that stuff, I think it gave a certain uh, segment of the audience with the belief that hell, anybody could be a wrestler. All you got to do is go out there and maybe take a fluorescent lighting, you know, one of those long ones, and break that over the guy's head or across his back, or take uh, a shard of glass and stick it in his head, and or whatever. I mean, it was just, wrestling is more than that. See, there's no storytelling to it. There's no art to it. You could go to any bar in any city in the United States, and if you just had a wrestling fan in there and he wanted to wrestle, you could walk out and put him in the ring probably two nights later. If he'd do it. But that's how much talent it takes to do that hardcore style. That's why I refuse to do the hardcore style. I went to match and they want me to do hardcore. I said, I'm not doing it. Well, that's what it says on the poster. I said, I don't give a crap what it says. Why did he I'm not rotten, doing it. Why did he rotten book you then? So if you made your position perfectly clear, you wouldn't do what he wanted to do in a hard No, I just, no, people knew me, and I would have an ordinary match. I told him, he knew I'd, not all of his matches were hardcore, but a lot of them were. I'd say more than half were, and it was just, but I'll say one thing, you didn't know what you were going to see when you went to the show. It got so bad for Ian that the Kentucky Athletic Commission, and you never hear about an athletic commission. They actually, I think they had disbanded. Then they went back into business just to moderate him, just to just to handle him. You know, they come up with this thing, and I'm sure everybody that's watched the internet. You see these big, long, fluorescent lighting bulbs and long. That's one of the most dangerous things you can have. Yeah, they're full of gas. The reason, well. yes, because when you break it, you see that little gas, that white gas come out of it? That's what can kill you if you have enough of it down your lungs. <clears throat> that's what's the dangerous part about it. But these dumbass wrestlers or promoters who who've never even read a book or read a, a, a newspaper don't even know that so but very few very few uh hardcore matches do i enjoy i think wwe still tries to have them and you have the tables and you have this and the, the barbed wire and all that kind of stuff and you can only do that so much because now the people are saying, give us, you can give it to them inside a story. You can do that. But without the story, if you want the hardcore match itself to be the story, I think you're mistaken about 
any kind of interest you can generate around that match. Uh, the gas itself is argon in those light tubes, and you don't want to be breathing that stuff, especially in a confined space. Is it is it deadly? <sighs> yeah, it can be. Definitely. Um, okay. With that being said, any personal stories about Ian Rotten? I mean, was he decent at payoffs or anything like that? I mean, I believe one time he apparently, uh, uh, allegedly, he paid someone in crack. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> Hope you negotiate no, a good deal for yourself. Yeah, th that wasn't me. Yeah, a few grams worth. No, he <clears throat> he paid me pretty well. Because he called me up. And what would it take for you to get you to come to Louisville? And I give him a figure, which was pretty high, but I give it to him. So if he wanted the dicker, then we could come down a little bit. So he thinks he's getting a deal, but it was more than I wanted in the first place. Hmm. So he didn't pay, he didn't pay, well, he didn't pay me that bad. And, uh, and he, he had some, he loved wrestling. Uh, I don't take that from him. Pretty decent guy, really. But uh, I've, I've seen some crazy stuff he did. And I heard a lot of stories about him. But that's the way he broke into the business with the with the hardcore. He, he was Ian, and he had a brother, Axel. Rotten. Axel's dead now. And I think they worked a little ECW and they worked that hardcore style. And as far as wrestling, uh, he didn't take arm drag and slams and drop kicks. And he didn't do that stuff. He was just hardcore stuff. Take him outside the ring, beat him up, or you get beat up, go up under the ring, do something. Uh, but all the matches were totally different if you can get past that hardcore stuff. I was reading about a guy that was in Puerto Rico one day, or he was in uh, TNA, and he went out there and, you know, for the, the lighter weight guys, it was, I guess, the cruiser weights. We wanted them to do a lot of wrestling. And I was reading today, one guy said, I, he came out of the ring and I jumped him. I said, stop that European style chain wrestling. It's boring. And it is. If you don't tell a story or do a little bit of the Americanized version of it, you just sit there and watch it. So not that I mind British wrestling, but a lot of it didn't tell a story. They just wrestled. And you and you see it on the on the United States uh, tapes too, guys just wrestle, but they don't wrestle for long. You know, for a TV match to go 10 minutes with just wrestling, people go like this. They'll turn the channel. You don't want them turning the channel. Give them something that's going to hold them over through this segment so we can bring them back. 